Hello, just Jamie here. So this is tutorial covering the setup and running games for the Amstrad CBC emulator called Caprice 32. Not sure I pronounced that right. Uh, so this emulator has been around for a very long time now and it's gradually got improved over the years. In fact, from my knowledge, it's a flawless emulator. It pretty much runs anything you throw at it. Uh, so for younger people out there watching this and you're not sure what Amstrad CPC was, it was uh, owned by Alan Sugar using his Amstrad brand. And Alan Sugar uh, bought Sinclair, Sinclair computers out and kind of used technology from Clive Sinclair to incorporate into his own brand of computers. Some argue uh, he entered the microcomputing market at the wrong time and it didn't quite take off in Britain. But uh, as a kid myself, I remember a couple of people owning the Amstrad 464. Of course, cassette tape based mainly, uh, just like a lot of micros was in Britain at the time in the 80s and early 90s, uh, whereas abroad, where Amstrad still got active community today writing games, uh, more disc, uh, just like in America, we'll say Commodore C4, more disc orientated rather than cassette tape. So let's get into this tutorial. Uh, so I've got a link in my description for this and all I'm going to do is uh, just go down to grab the latest Caprice 32 uh, from 2020 is the latest. As I was just saying, it's had a lot of developments over the years and I'm pretty sure the developers of this program have just done whatever they can to make it as best as they can, they've just finished. So just left click on this. Now if we take a look at uh, this assets list, we got Mac OS, obviously this is gonna run on Mac. Uh, we got Windows 32 and Windows 64 bits. Uh, so you take whichever version suits you, whichever operating system you use. In my case, I'm using a 64-bit architecture. So win64.zip, and of course this downloads is a zip file. So I'm gonna just drag and drop this onto my desktop and I'm going to extract this. So I use WinRAR. If you use any other extraction tools, it'll be the same process, just extracting. So first things first, we need to go into the release folder and inside the release folder, we have a subfolder, uh, CAP32. Uh, inside here, uh, you're gonna see uh, several different files here and you've got three folders. Uh, so the one to really look at, to take notice of, is the ROM folder. Uh, the ROM folder here is going to have your different operating systems for three or four different models of Amstrad computers. Of course, the most famous one in Britain is the 464. Uh, we've also got a ROM file operating system for the 664 plus the 6128. So everything is good there. Everything's good to go. You don't need to download BIOS files and this and that. It's good to go. So we're going to just double left click on CAT32 which opens up a screen very familiar to you if you're watching this and owned at Amstrad back in the day. So what can I do with this? There's no file options, there's nothing there to work with. Press F1 on your keyboard, this will bring up some options for you. So to load games up, we just go to load and save and we need to be using drive A and the game file I'm using is a .dsk image which is a disk image. The action we're intending to do is to load this image and then your next task is to go into the ROM folder which is where I store my game which is Alien Syndrome in this tutorial. So I then highlight Alien Syndrome and I go to load. So if I just resume here now the next thing is pretty cool. Uh, so if you owned an Amstrad, you would be familiar how to load these games. So all I'm gonna do is type in, using my keyboard, cat. So this then lists the contents of what's on the disc. So the next thing I'm going to be doing is type in run, followed by quote, and alien, which is name on the list of contents followed by another quote, and then enter. And there we have it, ladies and gentlemen, we have got ourselves a working game going on the Amstrad CPC emulator.
And there we go. So you're going to find it a little bit strange. And whilst I'm thinking of it before I go any further, um, if you're using a conventional keyboard, your quote marks are actually going to be where the at sign is. So if you press shift simultaneously whilst holding the at key, you'll get your quote marks. And of course, it's a odd conversion thing from the Amstrad keyboard to a modern keyboard. So that's part of the problem. So I'll get back to this. Um, it's going to be a bit strange playing this with a keyboard. Uh, most kids in the 80s, they would add a joystick. So I'm going to just start this game to get you a little glimpse of what this is like. But like I said, I can't do anything. So I'm going to have to go to F1, which obviously brings up the options. And from here, I'm going to go to the options tab and I'm going to go to input. I'm also going to check joystick emulation. I'm then going to plug in my trusty PS3 controller and this should technically automatically detect it. And there we have it. Now, I don't know this game, I just randomly got this one just for the demonstration, but it seems to be working really well. So, let's check this emulator out with a full screen and see how cool this looks. So, if I just go to Options once more, and I'm then going to go to Window, Video, I'm then going to go to Video, and I'm going to just select Full Screen, I'm going to press OK. And there we have it, we have a full screen. Now let's load that game up again and let's see what this works like on a full screen. So F1, I'm going to go to load save. And these are default settings and I'm going to go back to my ROM folder and select my game once more and load. Resume and cat, which is then going to list the contents of the image. And I'm going to type in run again followed by shift to ask pressing at at the same time to get a quote and I'm going to type in alien and the same again with quote and enter and of course it's got our stats at the top so it clearly shows it's running at 50 fps which I should hope so and here we go again so um, it's already configured as joystick or if you want to play with keyboards, then obviously press digit 2 on your keyboard to change it. I'm going to just go with press 1 for start. And there we go. So, like I say, no idea here what this game is. I think I've heard of Alien Syndrome, but I've never played it. But, as can be expected, kind of a cross between Commodore 64 graphics and Spectrum graphics. Anyway, that's that part of this. Now, for those who's interested in learning a little bit more of what Caprice 32 can offer, let me check, let me show you this. So one of the really cool features with Caprice 32 is the ability to change machines. So for example, I've just changed this to 128K. And the way to do this is to go to Options and you can go to ROMs. And from this ROMs tab, you're gonna see many different slots. So right now I've got a 664 ROM inserted, virtually inserted. To get rid of this or to add a new ROM, operating system that is, is just click on here. And like I said at the beginning of the video, you've got a selection of different ROMs which comes with a package. So that's about it for that part. Uh, other options you've got is of course you can have uh, black and white mono. So that's about it for this tutorial. So I've got plenty of more tutorials on the way, in fact loads, you know, I'm working from the 1970s up until Red Team recently. So be sure to like and subscribe because at some point I'll have the emulator and the tutorial you are looking for. And like I said at the beginning of this video, do check out my other videos. I've got loads of emulation related videos at this point covering really obscure systems uh, such as the BBC up until uh, GameCube and I'm going to go beyond that at some point. So again, uh, check out my Patreon and have a good night or a good day wherever you are in the world and thanks for watching.